All right, well, it's taken literally all of my cables, and I may even have to go make more, which is tough because I'm really low on gold. But um, it appears to work. So if I hop over here, you can see that I actually have a daylight sensor kind of oop, hiding over here. I'm going to seal all this up so that monsters can't spawn behind the walls, although it's kind of a lost cause. There are caverns right over that way. In fact, I'll probably make a door soon. Oop. Um, so this uh, basically is watching. Right now it is nighttime, so there is no redstone signal coming out of that that this receiver receives. If we go ahead and take a look at the logic, it's simple. Um, this is an engines one that basically says if it checks every 10 seconds and if the redstone receiver is not getting a signal, then it um, mirrors that lack of signal over here. But if it is getting a signal during the day, and we'll see that in just a little bit, then it will st it will inhibit these and stop pumping, which is exactly what we want. So if there, if it is get if it's not getting a signal, then its output is zero. If it is getting a signal, true, then its output should be max. There we go. That should be fixed. And yeah, so now all we're doing is we're just storing large sums of green aura up there so that when it comes time to use it during the day, we can. And we'll probably need to put more green aura in the system. I have another set. Um, I think I can make a fair amount more. Uh, now that we got this going, it won't waste itself. So then the last thing to do is just a couple little cleanup. Well, if, you know, for one, seal this up so that it doesn't can't cause us too much trouble in the future. Um, let's go ahead and close that as well. And then we'll just seal that up like so, and then close off the wall. There we go. So now we have a little area. And um, there's a couple of little things that we'll be checking out here. Let me just go, I don't have enough wood or inventory space, but if I go and um, there's one thing I can do really fast that's kind of useful is basically set this. So you can see by the way, our phase power is super low right now because we're just really low on, on the phase, but we will end up at a very high phase soon. Um, so it is helpful, you know, it, you'll get a little bit lucky and sometimes a little bit bad. So right now we're barely storing any power. I think we're going to hit zero pretty soon. Uh, and as we come back down, we can see that because it's daytime, we actually have these uh, emitters set up. By the way, you have to type in 15 for those. You have to actually set the power level. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, but yeah, so it is actually working now. So this is being inhibited, which is good. That means its power is set up pretty well. Now, the, maybe the burning pump is uh, alternating pump is not the best call here because I, I sort of realized that you like you'll get good nights and bad nights. So I might replace that in a little bit. But um, we can sort of you know we're not worry about that a little bit because one thing we're going to do really quick is we're going to take one of these cable things. This is not a critical cable. I left it sort of on the side for a reason because I want to make a sign updater. Uh, and this is a pretty useful little tool. So we go ahead and put a sign on it. We can just say done, right? And then we can connect up this situation. So this is the, if there isn't a, if there is a signal, then if there is a signal, that means it's daytime. So we would be using energy. So let's go ahead and say this, and we'll set the sign text to daytime, and then store uh, using energy, right? And you can see now um, that uh, that will actually, uh, once every 10 seconds, will actually run, right? Uh, so you can see it says daytime using energy. And then if we go ahead and put another sign updater uh, down here, then we can do the exact same thing and we can have the system explain to us what it thinks it's doing. Signs, and uh, then we say the sign text, nighttime. There we go, nighttime storing energy. So as soon as nighttime rolls around, then we will be actually storing energy. Um, let me put a colon there, otherwise it will really bug me that they're not the same. Yeah, so there we go. That system will now basically try to optimally use the fuel. Now, there's a couple other things we could do here. We really should, you know, not have... We'll need to make sure to power this, right? And so that I think is going to be kind of uh, an extension to this build. We really sort of want to think, get things going. We can toss in fuel manually for now, and it will just not use it. And by the way, you can see this massive phase power. So we may actually break these to reset them. I don't know. Um, I may actually just swap these out for regular pumps in just a few minutes. So the last thing to do is to make sure that we only we don't um, we want to make sure to never ever do work during the. Um, nighttime. So we'll need to make sure to actually bind to that condition in here. I uh, see if I go back out here, then um, I actually need to make sure to set a condition here that's proper. So we need to basically say, um, let's see, so if there is items on here, then we also need to, we need to break this, right? 
and move it down here and also have be a rest on condition. So I, I'll go ahead and do that really quick. The other one doesn't need to be worried because it's just always off if there's nothing there. Um, but yeah, so we're always on if there's nothing there. But um, yeah, so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to just add an extra redstone conditional to make sure that there is a um, signal. So we're going to say create. Well, no, nope, that's not what we wanted to do. Create a redstone condition. Right. And we can just kind of sneak that in here. And basically, so this is saying that we'll only drop aura onto the system if we both find the ores we're looking for and it is daytime. That's the key to understand. So uh, we'll be going like this. And there we now have um, a setup here which will actually do the work. Now, how close are we getting? We're in, we're in midday. So, yeah, unfortunately, we got really unlucky with the placement of these pumps. What we could do is break them right now. They well, they have tons of green ore in them is the problem. So unfortunately, we're kind of stuck with that luck. Um, but, you know, day and night time kind of go back and forth naturally, so uh, it will be fine, I think. Um, if only we could make it nighttime more often. Anyways, so now all that's left to do is basically to place objects. So this is the group that controls if we should be doing something. So this is the, en this is the one that controls the engines. This is the one that controls the item redstone. We're going to make one more group that's going to take things out of an input chest, which I think I'm actually going to put like up there where that red block is. I think I'm gonna put the input chest up there and make it bigger. Um, and we'll probably put the output chest uh, up there as well, maybe on either side of the red block, because we're gonna pipe things in. Um, although it would be good if it was within reach. I mean, you know, um, but that said, we'll actually be able to do some fair amount of stuff. So there's, is there any, uh, there's a fair amount of green aura up there. So if we were to actually go ahead and toss this in, you would see it placed, right? And then that will go off. And then we'll actually see, boom, we're already seeing some ore tripling taking place here. Um, I think that there will be enough to do just a few. Yeah, just a few. So now we've got, you see, six iron. We only did two. So we're definitely going to have to run this system for a while. Um, you know, and that's fine. Uh, we'll just need to charge it up on power first. We'll probably manually put levers up there just to inhibit things for a while and get a really, really good supply of green aura up there. Um, but the system, once we get enough aura in the system, then it will definitely be fine. We just need to actually create a fair number of aura crystals, dye them green, and then toss them up there. Probably another stack will do, but that means we're going to have to go out and find more stuff. Um, so, and these don't have any time left, of course. Uh, and they are actually storing a fair amount of green ore at night. They'll shoot it back up. Uh, right, so double power in the day, quarter power at night. Perfect. Let's go ahead and change this rule. So the first thing we want to do is have it so that... Um, let's make a new group for item motion. And what I'm going to do is make a group. We'll call it item motion. And that group will basically move things out of the source chest and into here, and then move things from here to there, and then from there, back up to the exit chest. I think that's the key. So give me just a moment and I will set that up. It's really straightforward. You can look at this one, like I said, an input, which is the, uh, the chest, and an output, which is the item valve, and it's exactly the same process. I said an input of the item valve and an output of the chest. So it's really quite straightforward. All right, friends, I confess I'm pretty proud of this. Now, I do have to feed it its fuel manually, and we'll solve that problem eventually, because I feel like we spent a lot of time here. But uh, it actually is working. Now, um, there's some different condition groups. There's one for the engines. You've seen the item and the item motion, which basically just tells it maps from here to here to here to here and says, put the ores there, put the dusts there, put everything out there. That's where everything comes from. Um, and it works pretty well. Um, in fact, it actually ripped through by accident as I was wiring it up. It actually ripped through a bunch of things. Now, I've gone and gotten a bunch more green aura crystals and stored that. Let me see if we can get close enough to, yeah. Oh, well, uh, freeze frame. Yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like a, a fair amount. And there's actually a, like a nine, nine, oh, like 100,000 over here. So we have a fair amount of aura in the system. I have installed these manual shutoff levers for now. These manual shutoff levers will allow the system to have a few nights to accumulate its power. Um, because in general, we shouldn't have like a mass of some of it. Um, but anyway, so this green aura basically gives us, so we only pay one quarter the cost to pump it up and we get double the output which is pretty epic efficiency. And it also is why this system can run, you know, with such a modest drop in its power. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it definitely works though. It's pretty amazing actually. So we just need to get a lot of power up there, um, which is fine. And you can see here that, but the way it sort of works is that these nodes act as a buffer during the daytime, but they end up being pretty drained by the time all said and done. 
Um, you know, you could almost argue that we should put a split in between here. Something like that just to sort of, you know, hold it together. But I don't know. Uh, we'll have to experiment because it is definitely interesting. But yeah, so that all works. A daytime sensitive system that will automatically... Uh, you know, do all these things it needs to do, and all we have to do is put some stuff up there. Um, so now, <sighs> I think I need to take a break from engineering, because wow, that was a really, really involved task, and it also involved building, and, and by the way, um, just to point something out, if I suppress my natural vision, right, it's actually pretty dark in here, huh? <laughs> kind of creepy, uh, but uh, you kind of lose that in the, you know, the, the flow of things day to day, but yeah, it's uh, a little bit dim. Anyways, um, let's think about what we're going to do next, because now we've actually got an ore tripling system, and uh, after a few nights, I'll start using it. Alright, folks, well, I have been down here mining up obsidian. It turns out, I didn't even realize this, but, um, I was all ready to, like, make the pickaxe and everything down here, but then I realized it's a good thing I, I kind of was lazy and waited, because I can actually harvest the obsidian with my mana scale pickaxe, which is a change from before, which is great, in my opinion. There's really no reason not to do it that way, given how incredibly expensive the Batania tools are and how they require power to run. Anyways, uh, so we got that. Um, we're waiting for our main system to, you know, charge up, and I'm sure there'll be a couple last-minute bugs I'll have to work out. It's always the way it is. Um, so let's go ahead and close the curtain there. Um, why is the front door open? Huh, I hope no one snuck in. Should be fine. I'll have to make that door even harder to see soon. Uh, so I found a few slime balls. Fantastic. Um, we have like five of those now. Could probably consider doing something interesting with them. Got a lot more of these. Let's keep this going. So, next up, I need to get back to the nether. But, um, I've also been reading... Uh, let me go over here. And I think that maybe I can do a couple things at once. Now that I have this immunity to fire, I think the nether will be far less deadly. But I was reading through the, uh, observations of an immortal. Um, and it seems like, towards the end, the last page I could find... Um, he called on her once more, repeating the rite of his rebirth, and gifted her a flower, the color of the blood she so craves. It's interesting, right? I think. Either she wants a poppy or a rose. She being, I don't know who. But I do know that this is supposedly the ritual. It involves sacrificing a chicken with a boline. So I went out and I did some trading. Let me go ahead and toss these in here. I went out and did some trading, and I managed to secure a bowling, which was trading for the emerald, uh, mind you. Otherwise, inexpensive. And I realized that I don't really have a great way to, like, move a chicken around. Uh, I don't really want to lead it on a lead. I did that for this guy up here, and I will still am furious and want to kill him. Although, at least he's, uh, at least he's outputting well. That's, that's good, right? So, given that, um... I think what I'd like to do is make a, a new object. I, I've theorized this is possible. We found so much um, end stone. Is it here? No, it's here. End stone around strange beehives deep underground. And I think we could use that in combination with some of this obsidian I just found uh, to make uh, we need a piston and a tripwire. Let me go ahead and make those really quick. There we are. I think we have a soul cairn. Now, this soul cairn... Um, is, is a one-shot weapon that gets crafted with a diamond. Um, so, uh, let's go ahead and load it up with a diamond. Right? Awesome. So now, if I were to go over, and let's say, uh, my, uh, my breakfast buddy, huh, seems to have gotten away once again. I'm not sure how they're getting out of here. That actually worries me a little bit. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and demonstrate it on something else. Although, it would be actually way better to go out. So give me a moment, I'll wait till it's nighttime, and then I can go out. Actually, you know, we've got a barrel full of eggs. And, uh, more feathers than I know what to do with. So we could probably find another chicken using this gun. Whoa, that's a lot of eggs. Alright, so, um, hey chicken. Oof. That hurt a little bit. But, I have a spawn chicken egg now. So now I can spawn a chicken wherever I will. That's perfect. So, um, I could reload this too, which might be worthwhile. Um, yeah, it probably is. It is a little, still a little scary, but um, worse comes to worse, we can always burn a bit more gold to fix that problem. Although now, it feels like maybe that's not the best call. Anyways, what do we need for this ritual besides Night of the Moon? We need a glass goblet. Um, we need a glass goblet. Pouring blood in the skull. Right, okay, so, um, 
Right. Not lakes of the lava, the underworld. Okay, so we're going to need obsidian, fire. We're going to need, uh, what is this ritual? That's redstone and string and torches. Okay, well, um, we could definitely do that. Uh, we guess we better probably won't work with these elaborate candles, even though it would probably be way cooler if it did. Let's go ahead and convert these back. We have a skull. We have like a bajillion eggs. We have all of the eggs. It's really fine. We're good on eggs. Uh, we have the bowline. I'll get everything and I'll meet you guys outside under the light of the moon.